Hey everybody, today we're learning that when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. And to put that to the test, yeah. I figured that we should have a push-up contest. I'm down. And, I think that would be fun. And you were telling me that you're like part of a push-up challenge. Well, yes, I was invited to do a push-up challenge where I have to do 2,000 push-ups in two months. So it's 1,000 a month or 33 or so a day. And I do basically like none of that. And so we're going to see who is going to win this push-up contest. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do this. And down. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'll pick it up. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 31, 32, I can barely even do it. Oh. So remember, okay. when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. Yes. So this month, we are going to go on an adventure. And our adventure is going to take place with a man named Joseph. But before we can go on our adventure, we need to be prepared. And in order to get prepared for this month-long adventure, we need to read our memory verse of the month, which can be found in Romans 5, verses 3 through 5. And it says this, Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Now, I know that that was a lot in that memory verse, but what's really important, guys, is that our adventure is going to take us through some suffering, because in life, suffering happens, doesn't it? Haven't you suffered? I have. But when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. And we're going to see a lot of that in our story today. Now, for our adventure for this week, I have our adventure chest. And inside of it are going to be one, two, three, four things from our story today. And it's really important that you pay attention to these four things because at each point when we see these things, suffering is going to be happening. But remember guys, when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. Are you ready to see what's in our adventure chest? Let's take a look. So first up, we have a robe. Okay, and the important thing about this robe guys is it's going to start at a place of favor and then it's gonna shift into that suffering that I told you about. But remember, when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. Now, you might be thinking, Miss Courtney, what's a robe? Well, a robe is kind of just like a coat. It's something you put over it, okay? The next thing we have are dream clouds. Ooh, I wonder what kind of suffering is gonna happen with dream clouds. Okay, next up, we have a giant pit. What? And finally, we have some chains. Hmm. It's an interesting combo for our story day. Okay, well, let's put that all away. And what I want you guys to do is every time you see or hear me talk about the robe, a dream, um, a giant pit, or something that would involve chains, I want you to do like this. Ooh, show off your muscles. Can you do that? And you might be thinking, but Miss Courtney, you just said those things are for when he's suffering. But when God's people suffer, it produces endurance and endurance makes us stronger. So I want you guys to silently put up your muscles, okay? Are you ready to jump into our story? I am. Let's see where our adventure is going to take us. So our adventure takes place in Genesis 37. 
And when we open up, we find out that we're in the land of Canaan and we come across a family. This is Joseph's family and his father's name is Jacob. And Joseph has a lot of other brothers. Are you ready to jump in? Let's go. So Jacob, remember that's the father of Joseph and all of his brothers, loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them and they couldn't say a kind word to him. Yikes. So I don't know about you guys, but if one of my parents loved my sister more, that would really hurt my feelings. And it would really start to, to spark up some jealousy and some anger and some hatred. And that's what we just read. Joseph's brothers don't like Joseph, but has Joseph done anything wrong? No. Is it his fault that his dad likes him more and favors him? No, but Joseph, I'm sure of it, can feel the anger and the jealousy and the hatred from his brothers. Because when people have been mad at me, I know it. And this marks the beginning of our suffering for Joseph. But that's okay, because when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. Let's keep reading. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. Listen to this dream, Joseph said. We were out in a field tying up bundles of grain, and suddenly my bundle stood up, and all your bundles gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about him. Yikes. So now their hatred is growing and it's getting stronger. And Joseph, I know, can feel that, bringing on more and more suffering. He has another dream, guys, and he goes on to share it. And in this dream, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars all bow down to him. Do you think his brothers wanted to hear about that dream? No. Do you think it's going well for Joseph as he shares them? No. Joseph is suffering, and a bigger suffering is coming his way. But when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. So a little later on in our story, Jacob, Joseph's father and the father of Joseph's brothers asked Joseph to go check on his brothers and their flocks. So Joseph does just that, but something happens. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. And as he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these empty cisterns. That's giant pit. Show your muscles. We can tell our father that a wild animal ate him. Then we'll see what becomes of this dreamer. Whoa, guys, that just took a turn for the worst. I mean, his brothers see him coming and they plot to kill him and throw him into a giant pit? <sighs> this is getting a little scary. But remember guys, when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. Now, luckily, one of Joseph's brothers, Reuben, had a plan to save him. So Reuben says, we shouldn't kill him, but let's just put him in this empty pit. He'll stay there. And the brothers agree. So they throw him in to this giant pit. That's no water, no food. They shred his robe off of him because remember, that was the beginning of what brewed their anger and hatred towards him. So they got rid of that and they left him in this pit. Then Reuben had to go off, but the other brothers sat down to share a meal when they saw something in the distance. Let's find out. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels coming in the distance toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders. 
and they were on their way to Egypt. What do you think his brothers are going to do? Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he's our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. Guys, did you catch that? Joseph's brothers are selling him into slavery. Joseph is being sold into slavery and being taken to Egypt. It's pretty intense. And again, has Joseph done anything to deserve any of this suffering? No. But when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. Joseph was blessed. He was blessed with an amazing gift, but with that gift came hardships. He lost his beautiful coat. He was thrown in a pit. His own brothers sold him into slavery. Joseph suffered, but with that suffering, he endured. You're probably thinking, okay, what does that have to do with me? I'm never going to have to worry about being thrown into a pit. And I hope you never do, because that'd be crazy. But it wasn't about the being thrown into a pit that we can relate to. It's the suffering. We're all gonna face suffering at some point. Sometimes it shows up like you have to train extra hard for, I don't know, maybe a competition, a game, a match. Sometimes it looks like staying up really late to finish homework get that project done, to study for the big test. Sometimes it's doing extra chores so that your parents will buy you that new game. Or maybe you wanna go hang out with a friend. And then sometimes suffering looks different. Maybe it's turning off a show you really love because you saw something you probably shouldn't have. Maybe it's saying no to a friend you used to hang out with a lot because they were encouraging you to do things you shouldn't do. Maybe it's turning off that video game because it's really not teaching you the best things. Sometimes suffering means doing things so that we can honor God. All of these examples of staying up late or working really hard, you might look at them and think, well, I don't want to do that. You know, staying up late is boring when I have to do homework, or it's tiring when I have to run that extra mile to get really fast. It's really annoying when I don't get to hang out with the people I like to hang out with. And I get that, but why do we do it? Because when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. Why would you want to suffer through all of that? Well, imagine. Suffering, right? What if it looked like this? A weight. <laughs> and this weight, this suffering that we're choosing to endure, we have to hold it up high above our heads. Maybe for five minutes. Maybe five minutes every day. Whew. And maybe holding this weight makes us shake and our muscles sore, but we keep doing it. What do you think would happen if we just kept going? When we endure through suffering, we get stronger. And that means that we can handle things better than we could before. And sometimes when we endure, we get an opportunity to keep enduring and keep getting stronger. When God's people suffer, it produces endurance. Hey everybody, let's see what you remember from today's lesson. I've got three questions for you and we'll see if you can answer them correctly. Question number one, what part of the memory verse was shown throughout all of today's video? Was it A, suffering produces endurance, B, endurance produces character, or C, character produces hope? Give you a couple seconds to answer. Did you get it right? It was A, suffering produces endurance. Question number two, what was Joseph's first dream? Was it A, that Joseph was the king of all of the land? Was it B, that he had a bundle of grain that was standing up while all of the other bundles of grain bowed down to that bundle of grain? Or was it C, that he had the strongest donkey of all of his brothers? Couple seconds to answer. Did you get it right? It was B, the bundles of grain. And finally, the last question of today, 
Where was Joseph sold to? Was it A, Egypt, B, Michigan, or C, Spain? That one's pretty easy, it's Egypt. Great job, I hope you guys got all of the answers right. Remember that suffering produces endurance, and we all suffer. Uh, we have issues with our families, we might be studying for a test and we just can't through it, get through it, or it might just be a plain old push-up contest. But when God's people suffer, it produces endurance. So this week at home, take some time and think about a time where you were suffering. It might have been for a math test or something your family was going through, or it might be something that you were going through just on the inside. Take some time, write it down, and spend some time in prayer talking to God about how you're different after that suffering. Because remember, when God's people suffer, it produces endurance.